Hello health champions, this is Dr. Lewis and this is the health and wellness sport. Now if you're new here or if you're coming here for the first time, kindly uh, subscribe to the channel because this is a home of health information. It's a home that will open up your eyes on literally every health condition that you might have suffered from or if at all you intend to prevent any occurrence of health issues, then this is a home to be. Again, if you're part of us, you've been part of us for the longest period of time, welcome back again. Thank you for passing by. We hope that you get to share, subscribe, and even comment. Ask those questions in the comment section so that we get to answer and get to interact with you on a personal level. So it is very disturbing when you see a child as young as seven years or even below with a prescription that has drugs for ulcers and H. pylori. I'm talking about the PPIs, the omeprazoles, the pantoprazoles, and I'm talking about the antacids, the suspensions. I'm also talking about other drugs that are supposed to help you, the sucralfets that are supposed to help recover from ulcers. So in today's topic, I'm going to handle ulcers and H. pylori induced ulcers in our children. Are they real conditions? Are they a way that uh, uh, we are extorted uh, through the hospitals and also through uh, the sales of drugs? It is even more disturbing when the parents of these children blame it on beans, blame it on sukumawiki or the acidic foods for causing ulcers in these children. Yet, when these children have been treated or they have been handled in hospital, for the lack of a better word, the same same parents will buy them soda, they will buy them carbonated drinks or energy drinks to help them boost their energy so that they start recovering from these uh, ulcers. Also, the same parents will buy them pasteurized milk so that it can cool down these children's ulcers. It is so disturbing. And nowadays, the road that we are headed to is the industries, the pharmaceutical industries have now designed dispersible tablets for these children. So that tells you there is no hope for these children to be ulcer-free because if the industries are already producing drugs that are intended to treat ulcers in these children or to treat, I'll use that, in these children, then definitely there's minimal hope. Again, I just don't want to load you with a lot of information or all these stories that will not make much sense to you. But I want you to understand that ulcers or gastritis is basically an inflammatory condition. So inflammation is involved. And in this channel, we've talked about inflammation over and over again. The inflammatory foods, what you should avoid to fix your gut. We have talked about that. But this topic never seems to end because there is always somebody new who wants to get information about ulcers, about H. pylori, about gastritis and how to fix the gut. And today we are going to help you uh, fix your children's gut. Now, inflammatory conditions basically hail from diets, what you've been eating and what you've been feeding your children. This is exactly what is happening to these children. But before that, I want you to understand that there are kits and antacids that are used to treat uh, ulcers in our children. Now, these kits contain different compositions. They contain an antibiotic. They contain a PPI, which is basically the proton pump inhibitor, like omeprazole or esomeprazole or even pantoprazole. Then you get the antacids, uh, the suspensions, even the tablets. Okay, so these are basically the regimens that are used to help your child re uh, recover from peptic ulcers. And then these antibiotics definitely mess the gut flora, the composition of gut microorganisms. Because remember, they are broad spectrum antibiotics. So they will destroy both the good and the bad bacteria in the gut of this child. But remember that the bacteria in the gut of this child are actually playing a very important role in this child's immunity. Also, when you see an antacid in any preparation, understand that its role is to neutralize the stomach pH, the stomach acid. Now that is a problem because that stomach acid is there intentionally to help your children or your child survive from different things. Number one, food that is coming in to the stomach, if it has microorganisms and harmful particles, this stomach acid, when it is highly concentrated, it clears this 
So your child will not have a chance to get cholera, a chance to get typhoid, a chance to get H. pylori because that acid keeps H. pylori in check, or a chance to get any other uh, issues or conditions like indigestion of proteins. So that is number one role. So it plays a very important, that acid plays a very important role in the gut of that child as first line immunity, so to protect your child from these incoming microorganisms. Also, it helps close the sphincter that connects the esophagus to the stomach. So once it closes that sphincter and then content of the stomach cannot go back into esophagus and cause that reflux disease. So if that stomach acid is weakly concentrated or is headed towards neutral or basic, and then that sphincter will open. So stomach content will start coming back into the esophagus, start causing your child discomfort, start causing those heartburns. And even sometimes these children can inhale this contents of the stomach into the lungs. And that is what we call aspiration pneumonia. So we want to avoid that. So that concentrated stomach acid plays a very important role in closure of that sphincter. Also, it is the one that is involved in tearing of proteins, the larger molecules of proteins. You need to tear them down to make... Uh, to synthesize or to get the amino acids that are easy to absorb, assimilated, and then they help your child synthesize different neurotransmitters and hormones in the system. So if that gastric acid is weak, and that comes through PPIs and antacids and also the diets, and then your child will start getting protein indigestion, bloating, and constipation. So you'll end up treating constipation by giving them a laxative or lactulose, but in real sense, you've not fixed the stomach pH, which is actually causing the indigestion of proteins and these uh, issues. Also, children who have uh, 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 the, the gas all the time, they pass gas. This could be a, a reason because of SIBO, the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So fixing this acid or concentrating that acid will help your child recover from all these conditions. Now, above all, I want you to understand, when you see H. pylori-induced ulcers, just understand that the causative agent is H. pylori. And H. pylori does not appreciate acidic environment. So since H. pylori does not appreciate acidic environment, if you concentrate stomach acid, H. pylori will disappear. But if you weaken it, you give him a chance to proliferate and multiply. That is how it starts to affect you. And this is leading us to this point that ulcers are caused by hyperacidity. Now hyperacidity just basically means production of the acid, high production of the acid. That is not true because if you produce the acid, as long as it's strongly concentrated, then you'll never get ulcers because they will fix, uh, strong acid fixes your stomach uh, wall and there, and H. pylori, so it'll go into hiding. Good. So that is what I wanted to, uh, you to understand. So once you've understood that these antacids and these kits will cause more damage uh, than good, and then now it's time for you to drop them. Once you drop them, you understand the cause of this gastritis or these ulcers is what you are feeding your child. Now, this is the modern parent. These are the foods that you feed your child. And these foods, I will tell you something about these foods apart from just causing gastritis. So let's go through it. Most of you parents give your children wheat products. You give your children bread. Chapati does not miss in your house. Spaghetti, macaroni. Okay, these are foods that don't miss in your house. Mandazi. And this uh, and including even processed cereals, these are basically wheat products that definitely destroy or alter the environment of the stomach and also they are highly inflammatory. So they inflame the gut of this child. That inflammation is what we are calling an ulcer because chronic gastritis, so when you inflame the stomach wall, that is what we call gastritis. But chronic gastritis will lead to a wound and that wound is what we call the ulcer. So wheat is very known, is well known of having gluten which is highly inflammatory. And it's also a simple carbohydrate, which basically inflames your gut. Now, another culprit, in your homes, you don't lack sugar. So sugar, when I say sugar, I'm talking about carbohydrates. So most of you feed your children processed carbohydrates, and sugar, uh, including the table sugar, is highly inflammatory to the gut of the child. So how many of you always are in hospital because of tonsillitis in these children, because of respiratory issues, because of pneumonia, and that is caused by sugar, which lowers the immunity of this child, and also sugar is a substrate for growth of microorganisms. Now, sugar messes your gut. Once it messes the child's gut, of course, gastritis comes in. Then seed oils, then carbonated drinks, the soda that you give your children, those drinks that you give your children to boost energy and to boost blood, they are lies, okay? So carbonated drinks are well, well known to cause an issue with uh, the stomach. And on these carbonated uh, drinks, I'll also mention the juices, both fresh juice, and processed juices. These are just basically sugar, high corn fructose syrup, 
that is sugar and it's very inflammatory. Fructose is highly inflammatory to uh, the child's gut and therefore you have to drop sugar and even fruits. The one that you refer to as natural sugar because the body does not know the difference. The body only understands fructose and fructose is highly inflammatory to the gut. Then processed carbs, the cereals, every person, every, every, every family has a breakfast table set full of cereals and full of processed carbohydrates. The breads, all these are the ones that are causing the issues in the gut of this child. Now, above all, when you walk to that canteen in a hospital, you find these mothers buying packet milk to give these children so that they can recover and that milk is very good and rich in calcium. That is not true. Milk is actually going to worsen the ulcers of these children. And also remember, milk has, uh, pasteurized milk has no beneficial value to these children because it is, it is basically junk. You've killed the protein, you've killed the uh, fat structure, and now it's just junk. So don't load your children with these inflammatory foods. So we all know that if your child is suffering from gastritis, these are the causative agents of that gastritis. Now, we have not seen beans here, we have not seen sukumawiki there. But most of you will blame beans and sukumawiki because of that blame. So you'll start saying sukumawiki, my child ate beans and beans are causing them all this irritation. My child ate sukumawiki, so we need to drop the sukumawiki. And these are the same same foods that your doctor will tell you to drop. And that is the basic lie. So nobody's mentioning about the wheat, the sugar, the seed oils, all this. Everybody's just concentrating on the beans and concentrating on sukumawiki, which are highly nutritious foods. Uh, but the real thing is here. So if you drop your sukumawiki and if you drop your beans, you will have a problem in because stress will never go away. Therefore, if you drop these foods, you will your child will easily enjoy other foods and nut nutrients will be absorbed adequately. Now, let me point out something about these foods. These foods cause an inflamed gut, maybe possibly a leaky gut. And therefore, your child will experience protein allergies because the protein will seep into this uh, gut, this leaky gut, get into the immune system and the immune system starts to fight it because it does not recognize it. So that means your child will have skin eruptions, the eczema, the rashes and all this and you'll blame the protein again instead of blaming the real deal which is here. So if you want your child to enjoy protein then you have to drop these foods. Okay? Stop blaming protein for causing a child's skin problems. Those skin problems are caused by these foods. So drop these foods and let your child enjoy the protein diet. But if you keep on dropping protein diets, you're denying your child healthy amino acids, you're denying them healthy fats, you're denying them healthy minerals that come with this protein. And you are actually blaming the protein for the wrong, uh, for the wrong cause. And the cause is here. So drop these foods and let your child enjoy the protein. You'll never see those allergies. Now again, understand that once this causes inflammation in the gut, you cannot absorb nutrients in their adequate forms. This is the reason why most of you are always in hospital with children with low immunity, Okay, you're always in hospital with children with asthma. You're always in hospital with children with uh, respiratory conditions like tonsillitis, like pneumonia. You're, you're now headed to hospital for H. pylori and the GAD and the gastritis. These are the cause. So once you start dropping this because you have to fix the child's gut, drop this from the children's diet. Now, people will ask me, once we drop this, because these are the normal foods that we eat all the time, these are our normal, our normal foods or diets, so what should we eat or what should we give our children? This is very simple. For you to change this, do this. Where there is wheat product, drop it. You do not need wheat. It has zero nutritional value. It will cause systemic inflammation. It will cause also local inflammation in the gut. So drop it. Drop the sugar. The seed oils, you have to drop it. Now, when I'm talking about seed oils, I'm talking about those oils that are labeled vegetable oils. So therefore, you will have to drop the seed oils. Once you drop the seed oils, what are you going to change it to? You're going to change it to saturated animal fats or the saturated fats in general. And this is where we're talking about ghee. So change that cooking oil to ghee, to tallow, to sweat, to lard, and you can also use coconut oil here. Now the question that will come here is, what about olive oil? Olive oil is not saturated, it is unsaturated, meaning it has a single double bond, just one. Now this single double bond can be oxidized easily. So if you, if you overcook or if you deep fry using uh, olive oil, you will oxidize it and therefore you will render it harmful. So the best oils for deep frying and uh, uh, possibly your cooking have to be saturated oils. And then you can use olive oil to top dress the salads and top dress your foods. So it's very healthy or even two, two teaspoonfuls of olive oil in a glass of water in the morning for this child. Now, how about carbonated drinks? Of course, drop them because they are rich in sugar and they are rich in uh, chemicals. 
instead prefer water and salt because salt will also fix the gut pH. So salt is very important in the synthesis of HCl and that will concentrate stomach acid therefore will send H. pylori into hiding and also you start healing from that ulcers in that child. And then for the processed carbohydrates, drop them completely, do not consume the processed carbohydrates, the cakes, the, the, the wheat products, all this. You, once you drop them, then you concentrate on complex carbohydrates. And as usual, we've mentioned several complex carbohydrates in this channel. Number one is the beans that you're trying to drop. <laughs> Number two is the sweet potatoes, the green bananas, the arrow roots, uh, the pumpkins, the butternuts. Those are the healthy complex carbohydrates for these children. Once you do that, combine these complex carbohydrates with every form of protein, whether red or white, just make it fatty. So if you go to the butcher, tell them to give you the meat that has a lot of fat. Give it to children. And children love that meat. We are the ones who tell them not to eat that meat because we think it is harmful to them. So combine with the fatty protein. I'm talking about fish. I'm talking about the eggs plus the yolks. Make them organic eggs, okay? I'm talking about organ meats, the liver, the kidney, the heart. I'm talking about... Uh, seafoods, the salmons, even the fish, the sardines or omena. I'm talking about those. I'm talking about healthy protein, the chicken. Make it organic. So let your children eat that. So there are so many options in diets than just this. So most of you, the food industry has loaded this into your, uh, into your, into your, into your line that you cannot imagine any other food outside these processed foods. These are the problem to the gut of your child. So once you combine complex carbohydrates with fatty protein, you can also use green leafy vegetables or cruciferous vegetables. All vegetables are very necessary as long as they are organic. They have all the nutrients that your child requires. If all those nutrients that you prefer, that you say they are in fruits, they are in these vegetables. So fruits have sugar and sugar is an anti-nutrient. It blocks absorption of nutrients. Therefore, cruciferous vegetables will give you all the nutrients that fruits can give you. So drop the fruits apart from an avocado. Okay, so basically go on a low carb diet, which is basically complex carbohydrates, go on a high protein diet and a high fat diet, and then vegetables. So that is how you start fixing the gut of this child. Now, I want you to know that these kids will never help this child. You can take as much kids as possible, but you can imagine if you've been eating these foods or if you're feeding your children these foods, these children are already exposed to chronic inflammation in the system and also gastritis. So you will end up getting, these child, this children will end up getting anemia and you cannot explain where this anemia is coming from. And guess what? The doctor will write a prescription for anemia also. So they will give you a prescription for kids to help you heal the gastritis or the ulcers. And then again, go ahead and give you another prescription that heals or helps you boost your blood, which is basically a non-absorbable compound. Okay? So the, it, there's always a prescription after another, a prescription after another. And then you get into the inflammation of the lungs and the asthma. And then again, there's another drug for asthma. So these children, even their lungs, or even their, their liver are being affected by these drugs because these drugs are being metabolized in the liver. So if you want to prevent ulcers in children, please do not, if you go to the hospital and they, they tell you that this child has H. pylori induced ulcers, please, this is a very huge scam because if your child has been eating these foods, H. pylori will never be absent because these foods cause a low concentrated stomach acid. So they raise the pH of the stomach and H. pylori loves that. So he will survive and H. pylori comes in through water and through the diets. So he will survive in this environment and it will cause you ulcers. But if you fix this, then you now start concentrating stomach acid. Once you concentrate that, H. pylori disappears. Once you concentrate that, inflammation disappears and including gut inflammation. So that is how you recover your child from gastritis, GAD or the reflux disease and H. pylori induced ulcers.